Hi, my name is Sabrina Pena Young. I'm a composer, and I'm using Logic Express and Finale uh, together. And this is how I've been doing it for way too many years. Pretty much what I did was um, I used my Malik Cat to uh, write some music. I recorded that into Logic. Um, I don't particularly like how Logic sets up scores. Um, it's kind of messy and not very good to give to a performer. Um, even when you add in some of the other options that you have, it's still a little unwieldy. So what I usually do is I'll export um, a selection as a MIDI file. So maybe I'll select the Mallet Cat part or a background part or whatever. Um, and then I'll import that into Finale. Um, right now I'm using Finale Print Music. Um, I used to use Finale, the full pro version, but right now I'm just using print music because that pretty much seems to do what I needed to do. And you can see um, this is a really rough copy. Um, I exported it into um, into Logic, I'm sorry, into Finale, and then I cleaned it up already significantly. Um, a lot of these parts here, um, a lot of these parts here actually ended up being all in one line, so I had to move everything down. Um, so it makes more sense. So clearly you can see a very simple line here um, for the left hand and this is for the right hand. Um, now what I do is pretty much I am almost at the final version of this. I haven't cleaned up the score part. Whenever I do a piece for live performer and tape, um, I always try to include a tape, kind of a pseudo tape part on the bottom here. Um, let me go ahead and, uh, well, yeah, I'll start cleaning this up a little bit. Um, usually what I'll do is um, I'll do the score version like this later. I'll do the scroll view first. So what I'll do is in tandem I'll have my my finale going on here and then I will go ahead and squish this underneath like that. Um, and that allows me to go back and forth if I miss something. Now of course whenever you perform something MIDI a lot of times there's some weird things that happen. And so that's why right now what I'm doing is I need to check the uh, logic score against my MIDI, my actual finale score, and make sure that it makes some sense. Um, I really enjoy using a really, really big screen. Um, probably one of the reasons why I haven't gone to an iPad yet, although I want to buy an iPad next. Um, but that is something that I need to do in, in the future. Right now, I'm just using what I've got. Um, let's see. Let's make sure I've got my window going here. To a palette. As you can see, I just kind of like stuff them on the corner there. Um, I've already gone through this a couple times, but of course, there's always mistakes, so it's always good to kind of check it. Um, I am manually going to be going through the top part while the bottom plays. Okay? Um, like I said, this is a movement, well, there's an introduction and there's four movements and then a finale um, for a piece for multimedia and for Malakat. Um, actually, what's going to end up happening is that while the piece is playing, um, they're going to be really cool uh, comic book panels playing at the same time. Um, let's see if I can find one for you. So there'll be comic book panels. That's not really cool. Let's see. Uh, obviously, I use Dropbox and Destiny. The piece is called Destiny Ian Dwyer. Uh, it's got a fantasy kind of idea to it. And images. So these are some of the more recent ones I've been working on. These are works in progress, obviously. But for instance, these shots will be uh, shown while the music's going. This is the space movement, and so it sounds spacey. Um, and also, one of the options for the performers is that they do not need to play the entire thing all together. Um, they can play sections of it which is something else I need to work on later. But right now I'm just going to go through and make sure that what I've got written up here works with what's written down here. <laughs>
you'll notice is this is section two. And so what happens is it gives some indication as to what's happening dramatically in the piece. And then um, it gives you some indications as to what you're supposed to do with the mallet of the marimba. We're also using Ableton Live for this, so there'll be some more additional instructions regarding Ableton Live in the final, final score version. Um, but this is what we're giving them right now. Um, so, so far, so good. Seems like I'm staying on track. As you can see, because when you change instruments in Logic, um, it goes to a different um, track. Then essentially I have to go to a different track. section three up there. So I have hmm. Yeah, see that's the problem I need to check out on this section. So if I have to redo some of these sections in the final version, but that's okay, that's why I'm doing this. Okay. what it really looked like and obviously that's extremely confusing for a musician um, because the small the part in the left hand kind of got all um, uh, confusing so obviously I rewrote it here you can see that it looks a lot better now that makes a lot more sense and yes it is totally playable because I played it myself so uh, sometimes people wonder if it's playable but it is I know it is I played it continuously change patches um, so there will be there might be breaks and because he's doing it in Ableton live he'll be able to control the um, additional music that you're hearing some of the background stuff some of the little bell sound some of the pads um, so he's gonna receive countless audio and MIDI files all of which to mix together himself um, also because I'm allowed the performer to choose what they want to do it almost works like a choose your own adventure the piece could be three minutes long or it could be the full length which I, I calculate right now to be about 25 minutes long for all movements played all entirety with possible repeats um, so obviously it could be a short piece long piece somebody could play one movement um, 
after I wrote my opera Libertaria last year, it was really hard for me to um, really think small. I'm trying to think small, but I can't think to size. I can't seem to think smaller than like 30 minutes. Anyway, um, so yeah, this piece could be anything between really short or really long. All right, so this next section is supposed to be the Hymn of the Sky Majors. And so essentially it's going to be a bunch of celestial aliens singing, um, and he chooses a spacey choir effect um, with additional effects. Um, as you can see, it's a little more confusing right here because there's a lot going on. Um, and I'm not really quite sure if I like how it's written. So let me look. That would make sense. Some of this would make sense. That would obviously be a little bit louder. Let me know what I can do. As you can tell, I use my mouse instead of using um, the shortcuts. That's just a bad habit. I know I should probably use a bunch of shortcuts and everything would be done a lot faster. But I also jump between programs. And sometimes I have a, you know, a text edit file writing notes. And sometimes I have the movie files up. So for me, it just seems to work a lot easier um, to simply have um, the mouse going instead. <laughs> interesting thing you might notice is that right here I put down with arm or hand because essentially while I was playing I also was randomly or not randomly but occasionally making cluster chords uh, using my hand so um, or a fist um, an arm is possible for some of these that are a little bit bigger I always suggest I just take my hand and I plant it right down kind of like a high five onto the keyboard allowing me to play a few notes at a time um, does it to be exactly accurate, of course, because it's a cluster chord and pretty much they all sound the same almost. Um, but it's more for the effects. It's supposed to be spacey and weird. Kind of like most of my music. Spacey and weird. All right. <laughs> would be working well. Another option um, other than a choir part could also of course be full out chords using a marimba, but I kind of want to see if this works first. Um, Obviously, I don't know if you've noticed, but the MIDI part itself is very wonky. I haven't bothered cleaning it up because it's just a temp track. Um, live, it's going to be different. So um, I also uh, need to get a new eye lock because my eye lock broke. So my good choir sounds are stuck until I get my new eye lock. Um, so I'm stuck with the wonky ones from Logic. Okay, back to 79. Or 86, I guess.
100. Um, the great thing about this particular piece is because I do not need a count in, um, the numbers actually do match up. So measure 100 here is also measure 100 there. I have had many pieces where I need a two measure count in in the tape part, and so essentially everything's off by two measures. Um, that's, for example, like if you're doing for choir multimedia, um, and you need, and the conductor needs a click track in his ear, so you kind of pan that a certain way, and then he gets it in his ear, click, 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 whatever, and then everybody plays, but then that leaves you with a good two measures of uh, everything's off. And while the math might not seem like a big deal when you're dealing with hundreds or thousands of notes after a while, it can get a little confusing. Um, or every once in a while something really weird happens where you're like, where'd the measure go? So, um, you can see I've written notes to myself. As you can see, those that aren't familiar with the finale, the red just means it's in the second uh, layer, um, which means that you know you can have you know the, the chords being held underneath. The mallet cat has an option where you can actually have sustained chords underneath. Now um, and have them hold while you're holding a pedal down based on the programming that you do for it. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. This is the right hand. See, like that note there, I'm guessing. It's wrong. Yes. It's being carried over. So the question is. Essentially, um, I have everything holding over infinitely, and I'm not really sure if I like that idea. So, it sounds too muddy. All right. So this will just make it sound cleaner than what it sounds like right now. Because right. in the actual version over here, everything's holding, but it just sounds like a big muddy mess. And because we will be dealing with real MIDI and not dealing with strings, if we had strings playing that many notes, it would be beautiful. If we have the MIDI holding it, it can get kind of icky depending on what's going on. So on the safe side, we'll make it a simpler that's one of my biggest things is that when you're writing music, simplify as much as possible, which is ironic considering some of my music is the most difficult music most people have seen. But I have been working really hard at simplifying. <laughs> um, so, yay to simplification. All right. Obviously, I mean, this is kind of 